I always remember this situation. He, he literally called the client and the client was like going to call the police on him, mm -hmm. like over the phone and was dropping mad F bombs on him. Right. You know, <laughs> and he like called me up afterward, man, what the heck is wrong with these people? You know, I just called them. They sent the lead in and the, the lady literally tore my head off. The next day I remember I was on my way home and he called me up and he's like, Hey, guess what happened? I'm like, what? He's like, I went and door knocked that woman. And I'm like, no, you didn't. And he's like, I did. And he goes, I sold her and her husband yeah. policy. He's like, she was just having a really bad day that right. day. If you can get through the, you know, if you can get through the rejection, then you're going to be a stronger person because of it. And then you're going to just realize it, it, it doesn't matter. Right. You know, just shake it off. All right, welcome to True Talk. Got my man Lou Joseph with us today. How we doing, Lou? I'm doing great, man. Awesome, Glad dude. To be back. Looking good. Yeah, thanks. Absolutely. For thanks you. for coming. Yeah. I'm trying, dude. I went bald for you. Well, not went bald, but yeah. I actually didn't wear a hat because you know you were yeah. here. I figured. Yeah, well, I'm representing. Man. Yes, yes, we are representing yeah. for all the bald guys out there. Got a fresh shave last night. <laughs> this is Jay with the Clippers. This is Jay. Yeah, nice. Me down. <laughs> love it. Love the dogs it. run. You know, they think it's for them, but you know, yeah, no, it's dad. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Uh, you've been with us how long now, Lou? Uh, almost six years. Six years. Yeah. yeah. In your background, you were in car sales? Or? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was a general, you know, when I came on board, um, I was a general manager of a Toyota dealership in okay. Northampton. And um, prior to that, I had worked with Eric Schmidt, yeah. you know, and I had known him for like 20 years. So okay. we were in the business together. Got so, it. Got yeah. it. So how long were you in car sales total? 23 years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I was only a car salesman for like, you know, I was talking to Precious earlier. So it's like I was only a car salesman for like three months. Okay. Um, I had gone to work for um, uh, one of my best friends. His father owned a Ford dealership. And, you know, I was just really reluctant at first to do it. But, yeah. You know, one thing led to another and I ended up there. And, uh, you know, shortly thereafter, I became a finance manager. Okay. You know, which I really liked, you know, because yeah. I was, you know, you know, had my own, you know, my own office. So you got into thing. business young. Yeah. Yeah. So tw I started in the car business at like 20, two years old okay. and just never look back. You know? wow. And then, you know, just of all the different positions you've had in car sales, which one did you enjoy the most? Uh, I like being a general manager. Yeah. You know, um, I think that was more toward the end of my career, you know, okay. in the car business. Um, I had left like, uh, um, left the finance office and then I became a finance director for a large chain and then they went out of business and then I got into the front end just, uh, you know, I became a general sales manager. That's when I worked with Eric. He okay. was a GM yep, yep. and I was his GSM and uh, we formed a, a really good friendship. But then when I became a general manager, um, you know, I was working in fixed ops, you know, the back of the house parts and service, auto body, and mm. then uh, working in the sales department. So it was, you know, I liked uh, having all those employees underneath me and, you know, dealing with the day to day, you know, uh, employee relationships. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was fun. You know, Got it. It was good, except, you know, it was just, I was just an ATM. You know, I was never home. You know, right. my, my kids and wife had a good life, you know, but I was just, you know, you didn't get to participate. You know, get home much. at nine o'clock, <laughs> you know, get back out the door at eight o'clock yeah. the next morning, you know, seven days a week. It was just, you know, no fun. Yeah. Is that what kind of <coughs> drove you out of the business or? Um, well, Eric sort of drove me out. Of okay. Business. He'll do that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, he, um, you know, it was on me, on me, on me. And, uh, you know, he's, he was doing great, you yeah. know, and I had seen all his updates and everything. And, uh, I came down to, um, corporate for, uh, we used to have our business development meetings yeah. here. They were always grandiose. Were you looking for something at the no, time? No, no he just, you know, now you knew he had left the car business, yes, right? Yes, yeah. But you weren't working I with him when you left. Yeah. Oh, you weren't believing. <laughs> no, I wasn't believing his post, you know? Okay. So, <laughs> he thought yeah, he was lying. I was extremely <laughs> dubious, but in the car business, that's not uncommon because you become institutionalized. Yeah. You know, it's like being a corrections officer, like Chris, you know, I yeah, mean, yeah. like, you know, the bottom line is, is when you're, you know, in that, you know, situation when you're locked down in a car dealership, you're not locked in, but you are by your mm -hmm. contractor, your hours. So, um, you become institutionalized and, you know, you think that's the only way of yeah. life, right? Yep. You know, so really hard transition for me. So when I came down, um, you know, I saw Sean speak, I shot, saw Marissa, you know, all the people that were back in the day, you yep. know, like, you know, and, um, you know, I was just left that meeting and I was just like, wow, you know, the whole ride home, I was like, this is something I want to do. Mm -hmm. So of course, you know, how, how did he get you to actually come to, cause you weren't looking at that time, no. right? You're still doing, you were GM at this time. I was. So yeah. GM making money, you just, you've been grinding out for years, figure this is just going to be my deal. Yeah. 
How, what did he say to get you to actually come to this meeting? Well, so, uh, so a strange series of events happened. So basically, um, on the way home, it was something that I was really wanted to do. Okay. And then I just happened to get fired the next week. So it sort really? of forced my hand. Got down. it. Got yeah. It. So, you know, it's just me and the owner. We had a, you know, it's just like, you know, they think they own you, you yep. know, and, yep. you know, you know, you take your night off at six o'clock. It closes at eight. You know, fifteen minutes later, the guy's calling you up. He's like, "Where are you going?" I mean, like, you're in Albany. How do you even know where? Right, right. right. I mean, it's like, you know, is there a drone over me or something? You know, so, um, you know, at any rate, you know, I, I separated from service. Got it. So, you know, immediately, you know, I went on unemployment, and I was like, "This is what I'm going to do." I called Eric. I'm in, and my wife was like, "No." Yeah, no way. You no, Miss J wasn't job. having it. No, no, no. Mrs. J was like, absolutely not. And, you know, this is the same story that I told you last time, but yep. you know, I'll just sum it up really quick. So she gave me 30 days. Okay. You know, she's like, you have 30 days. Now, what, what, why was she so opposed to it? Well, because she wanted her paycheck. <laughs> 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 you know, I mean, like any woman, you know, right. she was like, you know, um, you know, she was like, listen, you know, this is our life here. Yeah. You know, we have kids, you know, we have a big house, you know, big everything. And you are not going to go have a little bit of fun. So she didn't want to like sh you to start over. Per no, se. Hell, no, 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 no. She wasn't feeling it at all. So she <laughs> said 30 days. Okay. You know, so 30 days was it. So I had to get my license, I had yeah. to, you know, which I did in the week, but then, but you know, it was a mail-in license in mass back then. Oh yeah. So then now we're at two weeks. I finally get my license and then, you know, I had to start my contract and we didn't have go high level. We didn't no, have any of this then. stuff back then. Right. So, you know, contracting was, you know, really long and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm getting close to the end of the month and uh, we had a, another business development meeting here and, you know, we had a bunch of carriers. I came down yeah. um, and Eric pulled over Bobby Bridges and he said, listen, you got to call and get Lou's license, get, get his contracting right now. I mean, he's running out of time. So yeah. he Bobby made the call. He got me contracted with America, one carrier. Eric gave me a stack of leads. Um, I said, what do I do with these? He's like, go home and dial them. They were like, I couldn't even read anything. On. They were all marked in cr crayon <laughs> markers, right? Half of the people were sold yep. already. That's when the I batch. Them up, you got the like, batch. What? Where's Eric? I mean, I'm like, what? He gave me this lead. I, did he already sell you something? Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. So all weekend long, I dialed. I made like 15 appointments okay. for the next week, you know, which I don't even know how I did it, but I did it. My wife called me on the way home and said, you can keep the job. So wow. it's like, all right. You so know? you didn't even make it to 30 days no, and you got the okay. I, right under the skin of, yeah. cause she knew, she knew what, whatever I was going to do, I was going to go all in, you right. know, because I was used to working 80 hours a week. Yeah. It's not like I was looking to, you know, step back and not work as hard. You know, she knew, you know, anything that I did, I was going to put that. She didn't doubt in. you. It was more right. new business, new model. Exactly. Like, Hey, we've been in car business forever. Why are we changing? Like, why try something new? Right. And I'm always the new guy. So yeah. It's like, I'm always <laughs> going after the next new thing. So yeah. that's, you know, that's what she always, you know, says, geez, what are we doing now? We're something else yeah. you know and you know and you know because i always look at doing things peripherally you mm -hmm. know because like you know if you have an opportunity you can get more opportunities from that one opportunity why not right, right? so you know so it, it worked out and here i am now <laughs> you know people hear that and i'm sure there's someone watching going wow it's that easy no it's not easy no those first 30 days were not easy no 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 well, no what was the the transition like because you sold cars you said for a short period of time then mm -hmm. you were in management finance mm -hmm. have, have you done any other sales sold. yeah yeah i always uh, i had always sold you know I, okay. mean, I sold when i was at you know when i was 12 years old i had a huge paper route you yeah know? so i mean that's selling you right, know? i right. mean i was always my dad was a builder okay you know, rest his soul he's a great guy um you know and i have a brother that's a year and a half old, uh, younger than me and we, we would always go to work with my father every day. My okay. father would give me a broom and twenty dollars, and he would give my brother the saw and the drill. And I'd be like, "What's up with this?" And he's like, "You're in cleanup and going to get lunch." And I'm like, <laughs> "Okay." And I'm glad he did it, you know, yep. because he knew that wasn't in my wheelhouse. Right. You know, I'm not that guy. You know, um, but um, I was always, I guess, meant to be. You know, just to have. Uh, relationships with people okay. and be able to sell them. You know, Got I think that was my uh, my uh, propensity. What, what other things you had to change the most? It's a different sale than cars, right? Yeah. Like, what yeah. what did you have to adjust to actually, you know, be good at selling life insurance? Well, I had to buy a car, you know, because I always had a free one. I oh never yeah, owned, I never <laughs> owned a car. I mean, you know, like so. I mean, like from twenty two years old, 
until I was like 52 years old, I never owned a car. So wow. I had to buy a car. You okay. know? I always drove a brand new car, whatever I wanted, you yeah. know, which was nice. You know? Yeah, we don't have that perk here. No, unfortunately. <laughs> but, um, you know, listen, you know, so I, I had to buy a car. And yeah. um, then basically I just worked all the time, yeah. you know. And, um, uh, you know, I from that, when I started to the end of the year, I just, had a really, uh, and just was only two and a half months, but I mean, I had, um, but I was working all the time. I was dialing in the car mm -hmm. when I wasn't dialing, I was watching podcasts because, um, I didn't know anything. Right. So I wanted to learn. And the best place we had to learn at that point in time was, you know, all of our stuff that we put online, you know, yeah, from yeah. other agents, from what you did and you know, what Eric had and everything. So I just, so what was in. your schedule? Like, cause again, people here, they go, Oh, he just made that transition. Well, what was your schedule like day to day? Cause you mentioned dialing, running appointments, listening to podcast training. So kind of, you know, early on breakdown throughout the week, what was Lou Joseph's I, week? I was a purist. So, you know, and I, I guess I, I, I am to a certain extent still, to this day. So, you know, um, my dial days are Mondays and Thursdays, yeah. you know, and you dial enough to book enough appointments um, where you're going to have a full-time schedule and full-time schedule means not drive time and not mm -hmm. your dial time. That's actual time in the field or on the phone if you're virtual. Yeah. Um, so early on, on a, you yeah. know, you said Monday and Thursday? Yeah, all well, day. Yeah. All day. All what? day. All day until. Because there's some people who all day is like 8 to 12. Yeah. No, that's, you know, because <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're going to get the amount of appointments. I mean, we always said then 30 appointments. Right? Yep. You sit with 20, you sell 10, there's your Hall there of you Fame, go. right? And even if you stink, right? right? So I was better in the house initially just because I, I'm a salesman for, you don't need to be. Right. You know, but I was good at it and um, I was good on the phone. So um, I think that contributed a little bit to the amount of less amount of headwinds I had initially. OK, um, but um, yeah, I was a purist dial Mondays, Thursdays, run business Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And that was like leave the house at eight o'clock. I was running five counties. So I was okay. running Fall River, Providence, Rhode Island, mm -hmm. Berkshire County. You know, uh, Eric, Eric was just like, buy everything yeah, you yeah. can do. So I just follow, you know, I had the money, so I just invested in my business and, you know, I just ran a ton of business for the first year and a half, you yeah. know, I mean like nonstop, you know, and I didn't even really focus on building an agency for like a year, so, really? you know, I just ran and ran because yeah. I liked it. It was fun. Yeah. You know, every day was fun. I, you know, pack my, you know, you know, get my thermos filled with coffee. I would never stop. I wouldn't even eat lunch because Eric would always like bring food so you don't have to stop. Right. You know? And if I did stop, I would dial, yeah. you know, or call carriers, you know. So it was a lot of fun. You know, I loved it. And I think that's what really, um, you know, really stuck with me to today. You know, because yeah. I still love running business. You know, everyone's like, oh, yeah. You want to still run business? And I like, yeah, I love it. Like, you know, I love being on the phone. You know, I'm on a virtual platform now, but I also have Mail Pro. Yeah. Uh, expense leads, you know, all my agents, I just usually farm those out to my okay. downline, you know, that live around me. So, you know, but I love being on the road. You know? So you still go out? Oh, yeah. 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 yeah so yeah. You're, you're on the phone for, you know, a percentage of the week. How often do you go out in the home? A couple of times, a yeah. couple, couple of days a week. I'm running with usually uh, new agents okay. on the road. You know, it's fun. I have a new one starting with me um, this week, Sebastian. I just hired him. I was telling Precious a little bit about him. He's just, yeah. you know, guy, again, from the cruise meeting, you know, meeting so many of these brand new people that are just coming out, like, and they're not from this country. They're new arrivals. Yeah, yeah. And they're, it's because, you know, like Sean said, they're just like, you know, they want it more. You right. know, we're entitled. You know, oh, yeah. these people are coming from uh, less entitlement. I don't, I think we'll just leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. When they get that opportunity, man, they're just like, you know, and the people that they know that are in their, you know, in their groupings are like seeing that same opportunity. So they're growing really fast. And you know, when they work, they work really hard because right. you know, that's what they're used to. So they're looking for that opportunity, you know. So, uh, again, this this new guy I hired, I'm really excited about him, you know, because, you know, he doesn't have anything. I yep. met him. Uh, we go to the movies every Thursday. I met him at a hot table. You know, he works there. <laughs> and, I mean, just the nicest good looking kid, you know, tall, you know, 20 to 21 or 22 years old. Yeah. And just like, you know, he doesn't, there is no plan B for him. I mean, yeah. There's none. I mean, there's no plan B. He's just going to be a uh, face in the crowd, you know? Right. And I just said, listen, if you're going to help anybody, this is the type of guy you're going to help. You're so he was working at the movie theater. 
He was working at Hot Table. You What's know? Hot Table? Hot Table's like uh, they sell like paninis and like okay. salads. So the movie at MGM, you can bring your food in. Got so it. Can, it's like dinner in a movie. So yep. we always stop and get dinner. And I, we'd always go to Hot Table because that's what we would okay. eat. So I would see him there every Thursday, and he would always be like, what do you do? You know, and ask me, and I'm like, I'm going to hire him. Yeah. And he just passed his test, so I'm super excited nice. about getting him jacked and getting when, going. When did you actually start recruiting? You said early on you were just focused yeah, like, on your uh, own like, sales. probably like, you know, like – a year, okay. you know, in like in t- 2020, I started doing some warm market hiring. Yeah, you know, not not no nothing within a, re- a recruiter or anything. Right. You know, just like you know, we were having business development meetings at um, our office at the time was on Maple Street in Springfield yeah. at Goodman's office. Uh, my partner, he's an attorney, and he was involved at FFL as well. So we were having business development meetings there. Eric would come down, and you know, we were just doing a lot of warm market hiring. You know, Got it. So. Eventually, it did become a recruiting situation, and then yeah. not, you know, and just like. You know. But I, I think some of you know, I watched Sean build this company or this agency at a diff, another company, and I'd say ninety percent of it was warm market yeah. stuff. Like you're talking, I mean, I've yeah. been with him countless times at dinners, whatever, and he's recruiting the waiter, he's right. recruiting the valet guy. Like there's a one restaurant he goes to now in Florida. He's like, I've recruited almost every valet. But I think they don't want me to come here anymore. Yeah, right. He's ruining but, their work staff. But for people watching, like, because I think there's this misconception where like recruiting is like this big thing. Like I have to stop selling. I have to, you know, change my whole. You can recruit. I mean, at Hot Table, anywhere you go. Like, what's your mentality as far as recruiting? So uh, we got out. I was just on the top producer cruise. So yep. um, we got out, and we didn't have a rental car set up because my wife was like, I don't know what I want to do. Our flight wasn't leaving until 7, you know, that usual flight that we take, right? So I'm like, um, all right. So she at the last minute, she's like, we're going to rent a car, and we're going to go to Avondale Mall, you know, hang out there for the day, and then we'll go back to the airport. So, um, you know, we were standing out in the taxi line, the Uber line, and this guy shows up in this big, you know, Escalade, right? Really cool dude. And, you know, like two minutes into the conversation, I'm asking him about his business. And, you know, he asked me what I do. Yeah. So at any rate, I just hired his wife, who wow. is like going to be an animal. They're um, just, they're from Jamaica. She comes out of a corporate uh, 500, you know, corporate mm-hmm. 500 uh, relationship. And uh, she just had her third kid, so she really wants to change her life. She's already, I just looked at her um, testing right now, in the Florida testing right now. She's already 39% done with her course. And wow. she's doing dual health and life. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, she's, uh, she's dialed in. So that's really recruiting is just that, you know. Mm. If, you know, if you see somebody and you want to mention the opportunity and, you know, getting to what you said earlier, it's not for everybody. Correct. And, you know, no matter what you want to accomplish for yourself, if you want to, you know, share that opportunity with somebody initially, but then you have to sort of look behind um, the situation to make sure it's going to be a good fit because, mm-hmm. hey, some people are just like, they're just uncomfortable dealing with other people. Correct. And, you know, this is a, a business where you have to, A, like people, and then B, you have to be empathetic, compassionate. You have to make sure that this 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 relationship goes from beyond transactional to really interpersonal. Because, I mean, you know, anybody can just you know go online and buy insurance, I guess, right? And that's sure. purely transactional. Yep. You know, you're not going to know anything. You're not going to have that you know, voice in the night available to you when you have to make that call at three in the morning, mm-hmm. you know, when you, you know, you wake up and you realize your whole life has changed, you know, who are you going to call? Right. Right. It's like the Ghostbusters. They're going to call me. Yeah. Right. And you know, my <laughs> wife long time ago got over those three o'clock in the morning. She knows it's not my girlfriend. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's like, you know, it's like, I, I don't even get those, those, those looks anymore. No, you know, yeah, it's she like, just knows. What? you know, it's like, trust me, it's not a good call. You right. know, it's like, you know, either someone asking me a ridiculous question or it's a death claim, yeah. you know, so that's just yeah. the way it is. You know? But I, I, that that is key, though, and it, you need to understand that when you're recruiting, that it's not for everyone. Most of the people you try to recruit will not do it. So I was just talking to Precious earlier, and basically, you know, I think I have, like, um, you know, I, I looked at uh, my stats report, and I think we have, like, 300 agents in our agency in Atlas, yeah. and I think I had 50 writers last yeah. month. I mean, so... I mean, they're still there, but they're not doing right. anything. And it's not for lack of effort on my part. No. You know, it's just like, hey, like James said in your podcast, you can lead a horse to water. You can't make them drink. Absolutely. No matter how much you want that relationship to work out, there's going to be headwinds. And what are the headwinds? The headwinds are, obviously, you need some money to get going in this sure. business, right? Because, A, you need to pay your bills, yep. right? You're going to need to pay your rent. 
pay your mortgage, buy food, you know, which is all challenging in this economy, mm -hmm. right? I mean, so now it's even more, more, you know, I try to set my agents up, you know, initially with, you know, so give them some relief. So you'll buy them some leads or give them some, yeah. yeah. I'll even run business with them. I yeah. run them all week, you know, and whatever the money they make, they keep, you know, it's fine because it's an investment in their future. Sure. And it's an investment in my future. But, you know, man, that lead expense can come become real pretty quick. Yeah. And then not having success on the phones can really again, be a headwind in your mentally, right. in your mind. So then it starts making them question, oh man, you know, forget this. This yeah. is, you know. And this then, is a learning curve for yeah, everyone. Yeah. I mean, some people go through it quicker than others, but you're you're not gonna come in here. It's not a scratch no, ticket. It's, it's not, not a Powerball ticket. It's hard work. It's uh, investing in yourself. You have to, you know, listen, you don't need to know everything. Right. You just need to know a little bit. And then you need to be able to call your upline from the house and you can start running business tomorrow yeah. because guess what just from taking the test and you know going through our boot camps and stuff like that you know a lot more than the client correct in most cases yep. not in the iol platforms but you know in sure. most cases if you're starting in final expense you're the expert it's your stage right you know they're going to go along with whatever you say now whether that's right or wrong you better call your offline mm -hmm. because you could be telling someone some inaccuracies in which we don't like so if you have enough leads if you make enough dials, right, you're going to make enough appointments. Mm -hmm. You're going to go on all your appointments, and then you're going to have uh, enough sits where you're going to close those deals, and those are going to be commissions. So, right. unfortunately, the headwind comes typically when they pick up the phone, right? right. Because you're going to get hung up on, oh, yeah. get cursed at. And yep. most people, you know, rejection is something foreign, especially if you're not in a sales position, like right. if you're a machinist or a carpenter, yeah. right? You know, usually people aren't mad at you or yelling at you or Correct. cursing at you when you first meet them. Right. You know, and it's like, you know, whoa, you know, and you know, to me, that stuff is just like, whatever, you know, I, if someone curses me out and I'm calling them, I'm just going to take that lead and I'm going to put it off to the side. I'm going to put a red check mark on it and I'm yeah. going to call them again next yeah. week. They might Maybe be having, having, a, bad having a bad day. Right. Exactly. You know? Yep. And I remember James, he, you just did his podcast with them and I'm surprised he didn't talk more about this, but I always remember this situation. He, he literally, called the client and the client was like going to call the police on him mm -hmm. like over the phone and was dropping mad f-bombs on him right you know <laughs> and he like called me up afterward and he's like man what the heck is wrong with these people you know i just called them they sent the lead in and the, the lady literally tore my head off so the next day i remember i was on my way home and he called me up and he's like hey guess what happened and i'm like what he's like i went and door knocked that woman yeah and I'm like, no, you didn't. And he's like, I did. And he goes, I sold her and her husband yeah. a policy. He's like, she was just having a really bad day that right. day. So, you know what? If you can get through the, you know, if you can get through the rejection that mm -hmm. you're going to get and, and you're going to be a stronger person because of it, and then you're going to just realize it, 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 it doesn't matter. Right. You know, just shake it off. I mean, there's billions of people on this planet. You know, yep. it's like, you know, you're just going to be able to reset tomorrow. If you have a bad day. Your, chances are you're not going to have a bad day tomorrow. If you have a bad week, chances are you're not going to have a bad Correct. week. This, we always say in this business, if you just stick to your script, mm. right, S stick to your schedule, um, you might have a bad week. You might even have a couple of bad weeks, but you're never going to have a bad month. Right. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. Sense. Yeah. Dude. yeah. And it's like, you know, is it counterproductive for me to say most people watching this probably can't do it? No, but it, it's true. You probably won't because of what you just said. Number one, you got to invest in leads. You got to be willing to deal with the rejection. You got to be willing to suck for a little bit to get better. And then you got to be willing to ask for help. Like yeah. you said, call from every home. There's people that just the idea, the thought of calling someone else while they're sitting with a client. Oh my God, I can't do it. I'm going to look like I don't know what I'm doing. It's huge. That's okay. You're going to have to go into this almost half blind. Like, you, like you're going to know some but the only way you're really going to learn how to swim here is by jumping in the deep end. You've been, you bought, I, I know you're a car guy, so you've bought lots of cars, right? What happens at the dealership, right? The yeah. salesman comes over, you sit oh, down yeah. with them, and then he gets nervous, he runs to the desk, and then yes. who comes over? Yep, you know? finance, and yeah. you're dealing with him the whole time. Correct. Right, so, I mean, that's the same thing with calling from the house. Why not call from the house? I mean, now we have Slack groups and stuff yeah. like that, so you can just literally just be like, hey, you know, if you don't want to be rude and call, you know, but a lot of people like it. Oh, know? yeah. They're like, oh, I'm going to call my boss. I'm just going to run yep. this by him. Or you can just say, hey, you know, I have a, a group here. My boss is online. I'm just going to text him some information. It's just, you know, you got to type. You know, it's easier just to call. Absolutely. And get that information. But, 
you know, getting back to what you said, you know, obviously, you know, 300 agents in our agency, 50 unique writers, right. you know, so where are the other 250 people? So over the years, over s almost six mm -hmm. years, you know, a lot of them, you know, just disappeared. You know, they weren't uh, weren't right at that time of their life right. or any time of their life for this business. Sure. But yet they wanted to get involved in it. And, you know, you hate to see that, you know, especially if it ended up costing them any money or right. anything and they ended up, you know, using this as a bad investment, you know. But in the end, listen, man, you know, it's it's like anything. It's all on you. Correct. Right? It's like no one's holding a gun to your head to come and be, in, you know, get into involved in this business, you know. And in the end of the day, I think any person can accomplish anything if you want it bad enough, mm. right? But if you don't believe in it, you're not going to go all in. Correct. And if you don't go all in, you're going to get less than all in results. Yep. And that's when the problems happen, you know. So, you know, I feel bad for all those people that, you know, complain all the time about this business. It didn't work out for them, you know, and they like to make everybody else their scapegoat. But right. the bottom line, look in the mirror. You yeah. Know? I, I mean, like, you know, it's like if I fail, I'm not going to blame Eric. Right. I'm not going to blame Sean. I'm going <laughs> to say, you know what? I suck, you know. Correct. So it's like it's on me 100%. Yep. I, to me, that's one of the best things about this industry is good or bad, it's on you. Yeah. So you're, if you're not having success, there's things that you can do to impact that and change, but you have to do it. Yeah. And if you are having, it's on you. Yeah. You put the work in, you got better, you met with the clients, you challenged, you did what you needed to do when you were sitting across, you know, that client. Um, but it, either way, it's on you, good or bad. 100%. And, you know, another thing is, it's like, you know, they'll, you'll have agents that'll come out and have immediate success, mm -hmm. but then they can't handle the immediate right. success, you know? So, like, they have ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 in their checking account, you know, and they're crushing it. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, guess what? It's summertime. So, it's, you know, I'm yeah. dealing this with my daughter, right? You know, so, like, Nina, is she just joined our agency. She's beautiful. She's smart. You know, she's going to be like definitely a Hall of Fame producer, yeah. but it's going to be on her schedule, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just like, you know, she's like, Dad, it's summer. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, and? what does that mean? Right, you know? right. And, you know, she, you know, she, she's September, she's coming back and, you know, hopefully she's going to stay. Wait, know, so how old's your daughter? Uh, she's going to be 25. So yeah. that doesn't, because I have an eight year old yeah. that she says the same, it's summer. Like, what are we doing today? I'm like, right. I'm going to work. Right. You're staying home. I don't know what you're doing. Nothing today. Like it's summer, it's summer break. So that doesn't stop. So when they're 22, they still, it's summer. Oh, no, right? no, no, no. And she, she crushes it when yeah. she goes out, you know, cause she's really good. And, uh, you know, you know, so that's always a, you know, it's always a, listen, if you have a downline and it's literally your child, it makes things yeah. way harder. Like Amy Styles, you've had her in here before her son, Calvin, he was at convention, he yeah, wanted, yeah. you know, the push up challenge. That's right. Yeah, 2000, yeah. You know, I mean, just, you know, crushed his task. So his deal is he wanted to go work at Six Flags, right? Okay. So it, because he got the, he got to ride the rides, yeah. you know, and like, so it's like, well, you got like 10 grand in your account, kid. You know, you can go pay for the rides. <laughs> you want. But, you know, it's just not his mindset. He just joined the Coast Guard. Yeah. He can always come back to this. Yeah. You know, yeah. And he's licensed, you know, but he wanted to get back to the country. He's 18. He was a pro wrestler. He almost made the Olympics. So, yeah. you know what? God bless him. But right. that, you know, that's the type of thing you deal with, you know, in this business. It yeah. might not be the right time. It might never be the right time. No. You know, but, you know, I think it's, you know, you got to give it an opportunity right. to everybody. Absolutely. Tell them about it. Tell them to look at it. Right. And, and that's then, the key. And and it's when you're telling them about it, the answer you get, yes or no, There, one doesn't outweigh the other. Like, really? You, don't you want everyone to say yes? No. If I talk to you about this business and you don't want to do it, I want you to tell me no so I can move on. It's you. You at the end of the day, you're not doing yourself any favors and you're not doing that person any favors. Correct. You know, and that's why, you know, now. Um, you know, we have a lot more series of questions that we ask yeah. the client. when we get close, you know, offer it to everybody. But when you start to have that talk, you know, it's just, you know, last year I hired a guy. We, uh, you know, we were staying at South Beach for a couple of days before the last producers cruise yep. in November. And we went to this restaurant and the waiter was just awesome. He looked like Ricky Martin, you know, just like good looking guy. <laughs> totally cool. My wife was like in love with him. Right? Yeah. She's like, oh, you got to hire this guy. Right. And so, yeah, of course I, we hired him, yep. you know, and then at the end of the day, he was, you know, had no documentation, right? Okay. So it's just like, dude, you know, listen, <laughs> do I think you could crush this business? You know, but you, you. You can never get licensed unless you right. become a citizen or do something, <laughs> right? You know, so again, it's, it's timing or it's never the time. Yeah, this, absolutely. You know? And 
Um, you know, I, listen, everybody wants to build their agency super fast, but you'd be doing yourself a much better favor by, you know, casting a wide net, mm. but only bringing the select few on board. Absolutely. Does Absolutely. That make sense? Oh, hundred percent. I'd rather you weed out like to your point, your numbers, weed out 250 of them to get your 50 that are going to go out and help families. Exactly. And I think that's the bigger thing too, is what we do is important, you know, and, and it's not like. No disrespect to anyone in the car business. If I don't buy a car from you, no one cares. And no one cares. Yeah. I most nine times out of ten, I drove a car here in the first place. Right. It's probably another car at home. You know, what I mean, my life's not going to be dramatically impacted for towards a negative if I don't buy this car today. It's so true. But no if cares. I don't buy life insurance from you, odds of me meeting with someone else about this same thing are slim to none. Right. And the odds of me dying are hundred percent because we're all going to die. So if I don't buy that from you, you don't do your job, then I have no life insurance and my family's screwed. It's the, you know, it's the craziest situation when people say, I want to think about it. It's like, all right, well, you know, go get the crystal ball. And yeah. Like, what are you talking about? Uh, we're going to be billionaires because you obviously have a crystal ball. <laughs> right. Somewhere right. That knows when your time is going to happen. So yeah, just call me the day let's, before. <laughs> let's consult it right now because, you know, I, I don't know what that exists. You yep. know, it's like I, you know, being in this business so long. Um, you know, and just, you know, hearing not just from my own stories, from other producers' stories, and we've all heard them at, co at conference, yeah. you know, where you'll go and talk to somebody, and then the next day, you know, you'll go to call them back to do a reset, mm -hmm. and they'll be like, uh, they died last night, yeah. you know? It's like, well, you know. Uh, on that note, Lou, have you had, I mean, I know you've had death claims, uh, but is there one that sticks out? Like, was it the first one that really kind of made you realize how real this business is? Or? Oh, man, I have so many because I ran so much final expense. Yeah. So it's an aged, you know, it's an aged you know, right. You know, you know, age. You're at the finish line. Right, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, so, you know, I mean, my wife says that I go to more wakes than anybody, you yeah. know, and you know, I do, I try to go as many as possible because a, uh, I'm not the wedding crasher or right. the Cadillac man, but it's a, a, it's a good time to network with the rest of the family. Sure. I've already been involved helping them with the death claim, you know, yep. and you know, it, if you've ever been through one of those, you know, they're cumbersome. I mean, 33 Absolutely. pages, you need to coroner's report, the death certificate, you need, you know, 90% of the time it's going to be in contestability. So you're going to have to get attending physician statements. It's just, yeah. you know, and it could take six months. And yeah. these people are like, oh, you know, when am I getting my check? I'm like, well, it's not going to be anytime soon. So right. is there anything that we can do in the meantime, a lot of these funeral parlors will work with you, yep. you know, but, um, you know, it's just the, the, the nature of the beast. So, um, they're all, they're all pretty much, um, you know, I, I, I think I'd be doing, you know, the next one or anyone disrespect by saying anyone stood out. To Got me. it. Um, remember you know, your first. Oh yeah. 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 I always remember my first. You yeah. Know? So yeah, definitely great guy. Um, you know, um, it worked out great. So basically I went on the appointment with Eric. It was an Amherst mass. Okay. And, um, you know, we met with this couple and um, I ended up selling him an Eagle maxed out at 30 grand. This okay. Was, you know, back in the end of 2019, we we're getting ready to go to a conference 2020. Sorry. And um, they, they were both postal employees and um, he had just retired and I did the whole life policy on him. And I also wrote a couple really huge annuities for her. Yeah. She was still employed and um, him, we took his postal pension and moved him over. It was okay. my first annuity I wrote. Wow. And literally two weeks later he died. Wow. Yeah. Wife call you? Yeah. 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 Who's a dear friend to this day. Really? Um, yeah. Awesome. She loves Eric. She loves me. And um, he, he didn't look right. Yeah. At the time when we, we and Eric were there, like even Eric was like, you know, he doesn't look good. And, you know, I said the same thing. So um, it, it was my first it was my first COVID death. Really? Yeah. Wow. And, um, you know, so he died at the VA in West Springfield. He was yeah. one of that first wave, like all those, you know, all those okay. people died in the VA. And um, so I was just like, I told her, I'm like, you know. Listen, I mean, I mean, you made your first premium yet. I mean, like, wow. you know, I mean, as the ink's not dry yet. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, don't hold your breath on this. You know, I mean, you were going to have a whole slew of contestability. I mean, they're sure. going to order everything. And when I tell you, it's like, I don't know if this woman was, you know, had God shining on her or whatever, mm. but she called me literally three days later. And she went out to her mailbox and there was a check for $30,000. Wow. $30,000. Three hundred and eighty-three dollars. Yeah, they literally gave her back the initial premium. Wow. Plus the thirty grand they yeah. they paid it, and she was like, 
was crying on the phone and she didn't even need the money, yeah. but it was just a matter of like, just shocking, right. you know? And you know, yeah. that was my first one. Yeah. What were you thinking uh, after this? I was this? like, I'm screwed. <laughs> I'm like, you know, cause I was like, of course, you know, I mean, like, listen, you know, when new agents call me up, they're like, oh man, I just got this thing in the, you know, on my email from the carrier. And yeah. it says like, you know, I, one of my clients died and you're going to be doing contestability, you know, listen, you know, obviously, you know, it makes you wonder about what was said in the appointment, you sure. right? You know, I mean, yeah. especially if you're new. So right. yeah, I had that. I was like, you know, oh man, I hope I checked all the, you know, dotted all the I's and crossed yeah. all the T's here. Cause you know, I don't want to get sued or anything like that. Right. You right. know, so but you know, uh, you know, listen, if you run clean business, you're never going to have to worry about that, but Absolutely. it still makes you nervous. You oh know? yeah. Now I get, you know, like I, I was telling precious, like, you know, at three in the morning and the phone rings, you know, it's like, you know, not even my wife doesn't even wake up. Right. You know? I nope. just, you know, like step out of the room and be like, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. You know, don't worry. We're going to take care of yeah. everything. You know, we got you, you know, don't worry about doing the paperwork. I'm, you know, we have someone that's going to help you through mm -hmm. it hundred percent. You know, safeguard legacy, you know, now, you know, it's great. You oh, know, yeah. It's like now it answers all the questions. I mean, such a great product for final expense, really for anything. Yeah. You know, integrity's made a big investment and it's uh, well worth, well worth yeah. the agent's time to get involved in it. And I feel like, I mean, it makes you feel really good about what you do because yeah. of the yeah. impact that, like you said, I me mean, several claims, but the impact that you have on that family. The best ones are, well, the, the hardest ones are the younger ones, yeah. but I mean, the most rewarding ones are the younger ones. Sure. Because like when you're doing income replacement, big term, million dollars, Yeah. you know, and you know, you got a young couple that just, you know, you know, in this real estate market, $700,000 house, right. two young kids, husband's, you know, sole provider, you know, when that guy goes down, you know, Listen, man, you're, you know, hope you like your, you know, mother-in-law because you're going to be living with her, you right. know, right? And, yep. you know, that big house and all the crap is going to be gone, yeah. you know? And, you know, and then when you, you know, get those paid, I mean, man, yeah, it's huge. you know, it's huge, you know, I mean, like, and that's why I like to go to as many wakes as possible, just because not that I'm, you know, listen, I'm not, I'm not trying to get business out of <laughs> right, there, <yeah>. right? but, <laughs> but it does happen organically, Correct. right? Because people view you as like, oh my God. And like, literally when that happens, huge amounts of the family will reach out to you because they're shocked to yeah, the core, right? Absolutely. I mean, listen, in every town you go to, Springfield's no different. I'm sure in mm -hmm. your town, you're going to go to that corner, you know, or that intersection, you're going to see the people with the picture, yeah. you know, of the little girl or the father or the mother, right? Mm -hmm. You know, listen, I always say, do you, I mean, how do you want to be remembered? Cause you right. lived a pretty good life, right? So. Yep. You know, if you want to make a small investment to, you know, make sure the end of your life is going to be as successful as the the, 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 the whole entirety of it, right. then you should do this. If you want to leave everything up to the universe, I guess, you know, you can do that. But, you know, your kids are going to be under extreme pressure, especially in this economy, unless they're loaded. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, it's hard to all of a sudden pay for airfare the next day, halfway across the country, you know, bang out all your credit cards to pay if they want a funeral, 10 grand, you know, those are, those are, you know, inconveniences that last a long time yeah. and that affect your family. Absolutely. You know? So, you know, that's where life insurance is, you know, super critical. Everybody yeah. needs it hundred percent. It should be mandatory. You know, it, it's at really high school, yep. at high school, when you graduate from high school, yeah, you know, after you leave the guidance counselor's office, you go into the insurance agent's office and get a policy. Yeah, because a, you're going to get a retirement out of it, and then b, if you die, you know whatever your family sure. needs, or if you get sick, hey, you buy a car, upset. you have to have car insurance. You buy a home, you have to have home insurance, right? You you buy a cell phone. They, I mean, you don't have to, but they will talk you into some cell phone insurance. I would get it every time. Yeah. I play blackjack. I buy insurance on every <laughs> And it's like there I was sitting at the table with James on the cruise, and I'm like, you, you know, get insurance, right? And every time I would tell him to get the insurance, it was always blackjack. And I'm like, you're an insurance guy. Buy the insurance, yeah. you know? It's like protect That's the funny. bet, right? It is, dude. Yeah. Well, man, I appreciate you coming out doing this. We like to wrap up a little with some fun stuff that has nothing to do with life sure. insurance. Yeah. So you mentioned movies. You go every Thursday. Every Thursday yeah. nights. Me and my wife's, uh, you know, one of our date nights during the yeah. week, and uh, we go to MGM. You know, yeah. if they have a great movie theater there, Regal Theater, um, and uh, they're, they're going to anything at the casino is is pretty free, right? You know, right, I mean, right. they'll let you do whatever you want. You know, so you know, we bring our oh, is that the casino in, um, in Springfield? Springfield. Yeah. They have movie theater there. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, wow, great. Regal. Check it yeah. out. Yeah, it's great. You it's know? IMAX. 
it, yeah, they have IMAX there. Yeah. They have everything. So, you know, but you can bring your own food. You can order drinks in there. Or anything. Nice. But, you know, yeah. So we always stop and get food and we bring it in. So we see, uh, I see every single movie. We have yeah. a pass. So okay. $21 a month. It's a great investment. Oh, nothing yeah. wrong with that. Yeah. Well, well, on that note, so you're a big movie guy. What's your favorite genre of movies? Um, I like uh, action movies. Okay. You know, you know like I just... Um, I, I saw a pretty good one um, with Russell Crowe on Netflix the other yeah. day with the drone operator. It did like, uh, you know, Fear City or something, you know, yeah. Deadland or something. It was an awesome movie. But yeah, I, li I like all types of movies, really. I, I see everything. So, yeah. you know, you know, should be a movie critic. Yeah. Well, I'm not so much a critic, <laughs> but, you know, if I don't fall asleep, then it's a pretty good movie. Hey, that, yeah. yeah, that's a good bar. <laughs> um, so I'm a I've asked plenty of people this question, and their answers are always interesting. So, um, I like using the Elon Musk, you know, story here. He wants to move us all to Mars at some point, yeah, right? Let's so go. let's say we're getting ready to yeah. go. And he says, Lou, you can bring one movie with you because of the space on the ship. I don't know. Make up some reason. What's that one movie that Lou Joseph's going to bring with him? Uh, I'd probably take uh, Top Gun Maverick. Really? The new one? Was, yeah, awesome. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sick. Yeah, sick yep. movie. Uh, Glenn Powell's awesome. Um, you know, like all his work. I just saw Twisters. That was an awesome movie. Yeah, how was, you liked it? That movie's great, yeah. Is it hold up? Is it as good as the first one? Yeah, it's better than the first really? one. Really? Yeah, yeah, okay. I think so. Totally different story, but, yeah. you know, Glenn Powell is like the man. Hitman on Netflix was a great movie, yeah. super funny. But, uh, yeah, Top Gun Maverick was an uh, awesome okay. movie. Yeah, that's... Uh, Definitely a Got it. stand in for me. Now, that's a good, good segue to my next question. Um, you've seen a lot of movies, seen a lot of fictional characters, right? So, if yeah. you could be any fictional character in history, whether it's movies, cartoon, anything, books, who would that be uh, and why? Well, Probably Superman, right? Okay. Yeah, says, why not? Or right. Homelander from The Boys. <laughs> oh, right? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's going a little raw. But, yeah, you know, it's a little yeah. much there. Yeah, we, yeah we, I mean, think we'd call Mrs. J up and right, find yeah, out. Yeah, Mrs. J probably wouldn't be happy no. with that pick. Right Superman, up. okay. Yeah, probably Superman. Why not? Because, you know, he's faster than a speeding bullet. You, know, you go. He, you know, he's like, he can fly. He can go into yeah. space. You know, he never dies. I mean, right. so, like, you know, it's sort of like the, you know, he's jacked. You know, he's yeah. like Superman. You know, why not? Right? But he can't beat Batman. That's it. Which is weird, right? Like, you know, I mean, like, figure that one out. Right. You know? I'm, I'm on Team Batman, so yeah. I don't, it's not yeah. weird to me. Oh, yeah, I love Batman. <laughs> I, I love every Batman movie. I'm, like, super excited for the Penguin. Yeah. It's coming out, you know. Oh, yeah. It, that looks awesome. It you does. Know? Yeah, it's got a little it's Sopranos really feel yeah, to it. Yeah, total Sopranos feel, which Sopranos is uh, getting a reboot, too, with his son. Oh, is that yeah, really happening? Next year. Yeah, it's coming oh, okay. back on HBO, so that's wow. going to be... Uh, that should be, you know, yeah. Well, they cool did the movie, yeah. It wasn't great, it wasn't great, yeah, it wasn't yeah, great it wasn't but great. I did like his son's portrayal of a, a young Tony. Yeah. It was cool. So, this is supposed to be like the next generation, okay? So yeah, there, you know, so big right. time directing. Um, so I'm I'll pretty check excited that out. About Looking that. forward yeah. to that. Well, look at that. I learned, I learned something here on True Talk today, yeah. so there you go. Well, I appreciate you coming out. It's Lou. always fun. This is great, Thank guys. You. Thanks for watching. Um, hit subscribe button, like this, share this with your friends, your team. And it's like, I love that. Like, you're mentioning things you've seen on other podcasts. As long as you've been here, success you've had, you're still tuned into the training. Watch everything. Yeah. You know, again, you know, again, if you stick to the basics, what your upline hopefully told you, you know, if they're doing their job, you know, basically, you know, uh, dial in, you know, protect your dial times you know if you're mm. not using a dialer if you are using a dialer dial too because the dialer right. is not going to be you're going to get you know some no shows and you know you're not going to be able to convey the message as perfectly as you can right. even yourself you know protect your dial days when you're not uh dialing and you're in the car if you're running you know uh, not virtual appointments listen to as much mm. information you can get on this job you're going to get better because uh, the more you do something, the more you learn something, you're going to become perfect at it. And Absolutely. That's, that's the whole point, you know. Lou, people that are watching, where can they find you on social media? Um, you can find me on Facebook, okay. uh, Instagram, TikTok. Um, you're everywhere. What's I'm your everywhere. handle? Just Lou Joseph? Yeah, or? just Lou Joseph, man. Right. I have, like, you know, huge amounts of followers. I mean, on one Facebook, <laughs> I have, like, 5,000. I have 20,000. Do you really? One. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I always have. you go. Yeah, so basically, uh, when I when I started this, Eric told me to go and get a ton of people. I had some people on my Facebook. Yeah. But basically, what I did is I went on to yearbook.com. Okay. And I started in my town, and I went back 10 years, and I friended everybody <laughs> that was on the yearbook for, for my town. Okay. And then I went to the next town, and I just kept doing it. And That's then, smart. And then, you know, all those recommendations that Facebook gives you. Yeah. 
You, I just click, you know, until they say okay. you're going to be in Facebook jail. Look at that. <laughs> now, you, now you learn how to yeah, build your social media. You Look it, at that. Man. Yeah, so it's great. Well, if you're watching, you like Lou Joseph, check him out on social media. Yeah, um, if you want to join Atlas. his team, reach out, yeah. FFL Atlas. Yeah. Um, if you're here already, don't you can't join his team, but, yeah. I mean, you could definitely reach out. That's it. Yeah, but thanks sure. again, man. Appreciate you coming out. Guys, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week right here on True Talk. Mm-hmm.